morning modern stutters and this morning's modern stutter tool must have conversation I thought we'd continue it and talk more about air nail guns and air compressors so starting off let's dive into the tools that we use all the time with our air compressor we use this stapler right here to build our $30 chicken coop in 30 minutes if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link to that video right here I wish I would have had it sooner it's an air stapler this one we got from Harbor Freight I believe it was 20 bucks dirt cheap and really worth the investment right here you get a little lever to press open it up it slides in here are your staples the staples that this one holds are the round crown staples Just insert them in here and push it in place. This also has a safety. You gotta depress that down and in before it'll let your trigger fire a staple. All the newer nail guns and staple guns have this safety feature. So if you pull the trigger, it's not gonna go off until you depress this in. Some air guns, they're all different and I think it has to do with the age and just the brand. Some of them and the trigger. Sometimes you can change your trigger to do this. Some of them when you push your safety in and then pull your trigger, it won't go off. If you have this depressed first before your trigger. Some of them you have to push down and then pull your trigger and it'll let one nail or staple go off. Other ones have it if you hold your trigger in and you bump it you could be nailing like this and it'll be going off and putting in nails or staples for you like a semi-automatic rifle that works really great if you have a lot of fast repetitive nails or staples to put in but you need to be on your game and paying attention you need to be focused and know where your fingers and hands are and your feet are all the time you don't want to be going around and have your hand on the back side or in the wrong place and just bump tap it so you always need to know if your finger's on that trigger, just like a rifle, if your finger's on that trigger, you've got to be ready to shoot. You don't want your finger on that trigger if you're not ready and not 100% sure where everything is and everybody. They make a regular stapler air also. So it's not going to be a hammer staple like this, but it's going to shoot the staples this size. And one you can really use that is if you're installing insulation in your house and you got a lot of little staples to put up. You can get an air one. They also make battery operated ones. They'll do the same thing. They'll be a little bit more expensive, but they won't have a cord or a hose, which is nice so if you're in an awkward spot, if you're in an attic, or if you're in a basement and you don't want to have, to have your hose all over the place, a battery operated stapler would work nice too. After we go through these two nail guns right here, I'll bring you and show you our air compressor. But when we got our air compressor, it was back when we had our first house. And that was back in probably 2003 or 2004. We got to the air compressor and these two nail guns for a combo. And it was around Christmas time. So most of the big chain stores have the combos all the time. But around Christmas time and the holidays, they'll have the combos on sale. I believe the air compressor and the two nail guns were either $199 or $299. That was, what, 12, 13 years ago that we bought all this stuff. So I can't remember, but you can find them on sale nowadays for, I believe, $299, which is a great value. Let's dive in and I'll show you what we got here. In this case is a Brad gun. This gun's gonna shoot a nice little finish nail. It's gonna go, you can go as short as 5 8 and as long as inch and 5 8 with this gun. It's nice and small. You can get into tight spots. The nice thing about this gun is, is it, you can get into small spots, it gives a small little nail, and the only thing it's gonna leave behind is the pinhole of the nail. You don't have to worry about, like with a framing gun or a siding gun, you usually get around the head marks from the gun. This you don't get it, it's more finish work, which is nice. So each nail gun you're gonna need has different functions for different applications. The gun down here is a little bit bigger and it's a finish gun. This will shoot a nail that's an inch long to two and a half inches long. Let's get one out here.
Let's compare the two nails. So your finished nails, let's see if we can get it to focus. This is a finished nail. And that's a brad nail. It's about half the thickness. So if you need more strength and more durability, you're going to want to go with a finished nail. If you're just kind of tacking it in place, if you're making furniture or putting trim up, I'm going to recommend the brad nailer. The finished nail gun I'll bring you upstairs and I'll show you on some of our trim work what it leaves for a mark. The brad gun works nicer if you have the nails. It gives you a smaller hole. That means less filling if you want to fill in your nail holes. And the air gun doesn't leave a mark. I'll show you in a minute. When we were installing our wood flooring in the house upstairs, I used the finished nail gun. They're a more rugged nail versus the brad nail gun. So they, they have their give and a take. You're going to use one for one and one for another. If you're working in a hardwood and you're afraid the nail's gonna can move on you, you're gonna want to use a finish gun. We're using a lot of soft wood when we're doing trim work, so we're gonna use the brad gun. If it hits a knot, they do deflect easy. So then again, be careful where your hands are. Even if you think you're away from your nail hole, you gotta remember your nail can go one way or another. I've had it in the past. I've used a brad nail. And I was holding the trim work and my fingers were away from the gun and away from the nail hole. Well, the nail must have hit a knot inside one of the boards and decided to come out on the edge and went right in and went right in the tip of my finger. It didn't do any damage really. I pulled my finger out, not it was bleeding and it hurt, and it was a great lesson. I didn't hurt anything, but it's just something I went, wow, that's crazy. So it's just one more thing to keep an eye on. I'd rather learn from a small incident like that than a big one. I'm trying to make a video here. You think we take the nail guns out of this hole and it's a good spot for you to come play in? Huh? It has the safety on it. To load this one, you gotta pull your arm back. The nails drop down and it's a top load. When you have your nails loaded, you push your little trigger in and it lets the slide up. On the brad gun it loads differently these are these two are the same brand they came in the same bundle and they load differently which is kind of odd but you have your little push right here pull it it slides and your brads will fit inside and then it's locked in place again on my nail guns I like having cases you have a little area to keep nails and you also have a place for oil. All right, here's a perfect spot to show you the two different nails being used on our bench we made for our kitchen table. Right here in the trim work, you get the little tiny holes from the brad gun when you want small nails. And then here I needed a bigger heavy duty nail and that's what the finished nail gun leaves you for a hole. So if you're trying to cover something with putty or if you want to paint it and you want it filled in, you can either have a bigger hole like this or just a small hole that the brad gun gives you. So when I'm using my nail guns, that's one thing I think of. Let's talk air compressors for a little bit. I'm not going to get into all the different style air compressors they have out there. I'm just going to be talking about air compressors in general and the one that we have. The reason we have the pancake style one is it came with the nail guns. It was a great price and it's portable. Every, just like every tool, every air compressor does its own job. A small air compressor like this is handy because it's portable. It'll run nail guns. You can put air in your tires. You can blow, you can put a blow gun in there and blow off stuff, but you can't go and put a lot of big air tools on. Like you couldn't use an air sander, you couldn't use a paint gun. There's not enough volume in the tank to keep up with all the air you would need. That you would need a big tank. But this is especially designed for nail guns. It's lightweight, it's portable. Most of these small air compressors are oilless. 
they work great. They're usually around one to two horsepower. You're gonna have a gauge telling you what how much air is in your tank. And in here it has a, a set, like ours goes up to 125 PSI, and it shuts off. And when it gets down to around 30 or 40, it'll kick on. Right here you have a regulator to regulate how much air pressure is going to your nail gun. Normally on them, there's some way to spin it to adjust your pressure. And they have a lock. So ours, you got to pull out, and you can spin it one way or another. When you're adding air pressure to it, it is rapid. When you're removing air pressure, it takes a little bit. So go slow, maybe drive one nail, check it, and see what your pressure is. The big reason for being able to adjust your air pressure is this will determine how deep your nail is driven. So if you're driving into different kinds of wood, you'll need more air pressure, like pine, regular white pine, fir is soft. If you're driving into like a southern yellow pine, that's hard, so you need to crank your air pressure up. If you're using a finished gun or a brad gun, you're not going to need as much air pressure as you would on a framing gun or a roofing gun. In different times of the year, you're going to need a difference. So this is handy to have, and you can make lots of adjustments. Right here is a pressure relief valve. So if it gets overpressurized, instead of the tank blowing, this will blow and it'll let the air out so the tank doesn't blow. Every once in a while, you'll walk by or you'll hit it, and the air will stop coming out of it. So just know, hit it, and it'll stop. If it doesn't, you have an issue. It could be a bad fitting, or your air compressor is not shutting off. But if you hear it going off, just check it, make sure you didn't. I've walked by this plenty of times and bumped it, and it goes off. On the bottom side of your tanks, make sure you're going to have a little bleeder screw after every use. Once your tank shut off, you should un open this up and let all the water drain out because the air compressors make a lot of condensation and it puts water in your tank. So you want to drain that after every use. Now let's talk about, you know what, wait, I think this video is getting long enough. Next week we'll talk about more of the bigger nail guns. We'll get into framing guns and siding guns. I'm sure we're getting lengthy on the video at a topic as it is. So thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If there's any particulars you want to know about the tools we went over today, or the ones we're going to go over next week, leave them in the comments down below. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Mm -hmm.